everybody welcome back to Sueño de Vida here in Ecuador uh, reforesting the cloud forest a uh, little agroforestry uh, project update here so what we've got here are some baby cacaos that I have cultivated down in my uh, little homemade nursery and uh, this field I think I showed you guys this field a month or two ago it, this was once all grass and what we've got in here is our first wave of pioneer species, which are, uh, we're using bananas, plantains, and yucca. Uh, we use bananas and plantains to create big leaves. You can see these have big leaves, even though they're still just babies, to create free fertilizer, biomass, and shade. How do you do that? Well, you simply chop the leaves and you put them on the ground when the banana trees get a little bigger. And now what we are doing is we are planting these baby cacaos here in the protection of their nurse plants, which is the banana or the plantain. I use those interchangeably, guys. Banana, plantain, pretty much the same thing. One is starchy, one is sweet. So you can see now this guy is just about big enough to start casting some protective shade down onto the cacao. So that's what we're doing here. I've got my helpers, Kevin and Neandre, with their soundtrack. Say hi, guys. Yes, all. Bananas plantains, just so you know, they get to be about 20, 25 feet tall in a little under a year, in about 10 or 11 months, and that's also when they produce their fruit, their bananas. They die back when they do that. They only produce once. Some of you guys might not know that, that a banana plantain is actually just a plant inside this, uh, what looks like a trunk here. It's really just a big watery stem. All the leaves are furled up inside of the stem, and then as it rains and they need to evaporate water, they open up to the sky. As the leaves get older, they turn yellow brown, they die back. So what you want to do when they get like this is they make excellent ground cover. Just chop them, right? Chop them off, chop off the brown ones. Yeah. And then you take that coverage and you put it, here's a little baby cacao that we just planted. Yeah. And you put them here at the base. And what that does is, like I was explaining about biomass and fertilizer, here's the example, is now I'm covering the ground here so that we can't get a lot of engroaching vegetation to grow back really quickly. This leaf will break down because, not because things brought, break down by themselves, very important to know, but because little microbes inside the soil, bugs, critters, amea, bacteria, fungi, they will... Uh, eat this okay that's their food they eat this and then they excrete into the soil which makes the soil more rich okay so and then also they die and as their little bodies die they become uh, organic matter themselves which helps to form humus so putting uh, organic matter on the ground like banana leaves any vegetation is really important not just to shade out the weeds but also to help to build up the healthy ecosystem Okay, and then an additional pioneer to bananas and plantains that also grows quickly and will grow in practically any soil. Actually, it'll even grow in concrete. This is yucca or cassava. Some of you guys might be familiar with this in the Hispanic section of your grocery store. If you're not from the global south or you don't live in the global south, it looks pretty gnarly, but it's beautiful. It's pure white inside and it cooks up similar to a potato. Even denser though, richer, creamier. I absolutely love yucca. Um, delicious. And then also the other advantage of it is that it can really till your soil for you. You can see the soil here in this new field because it's a pasture. Um, the soil is fairly compacted, which is why we're working so hard to come in with our pioneer species and feed the soil and till the soil using bananas, plantains, and yucca. And I can tell that because even though yucca is incredibly strong, the tubers are incredibly strong and they can bust through almost any type of ground. It's even struggling here. You see these skinny portions here? This is where the ground is super compacted and the yucca basically has to like just bust through it to... Um, to get through. So when you have mature, a mature plantation, you get big, huge yucca roots that are basically like all one piece. This is still great. I mean, this is still edible. I'm sure it's still going to be delicious, but it'll get better and better uh, the more your plantation matures, the more your agroforestry system, I should say. Okay. And then when you get to the point where you've cut your plant and you've got like a little stick shift here, okay, you just want to start to loosen it up. Now this plant, this one's been in the ground for a long time. So there was like a lot of soil. 
And what you'll see, guys, from a soil restoration point of view, from soil regeneration, is how nice and loose and crumbly and wonderful and black the soil is. Because what yucca basically does, as what you'll see, is it can turn compacted soil, because the tubers are so big and so strong, it turns compacted soil into loose soil that's ideal for planting. So use yucca, don't use a rotiller, use yucca as a way to till soil in the subtropics, yeah? So now you gotta get a good grip on your stick shift, pull your stomach in, arch your back, get ready to use your legs, and you're basically doing a deadlift to take it out of the ground. And you can see they really are massive, okay? So, uh, and actually one broke. I left one in the ground here that broke because it is whew, equally massive. So nothing like taking, you know, 35 pounds of food out of the ground in one fell swoop. So that's how you harvest yucca. And that is also how you use yucca. Come on over here, Sarah. That's how you use yucca to dig for you. Now say I wanted to plant something here that was more delicate, like a cacao tree or a coffee tree. I've got soil that's already prepared. I don't need to open it with a shovel. I don't need to hit it with a hoe. I don't need to go crazy and kill myself. All I needed to do was plant yucca first, which I can also eat and I can also sell. So it's not like I'm just putting things in the ground that I can't use and then I have to wait. That's the great thing about agroforestry when you use succession planting with pioneers is that you have crops that you can eat and or sell every step along the way. You don't have to really just sit around and wait, but you use plants to prepare the grounds for other plants and you also get a meal out of it.